A Conservative by Charlotte Perkins Gilman Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo A Conservative The garden beds I wandered by One bright and cheerful morn When I found a new-fledged butterfly A-sitting on a thorn A black and crimson butterfly All doleful and forlorn I thought that life could have no sting to infant butterflies, so I gazed on this unhappy thing with wonder and surprise, while sadly, with his waving wing, he wiped his weeping eyes. Said I, what can the matter be? Why weepest thou so sore? With garden fair and sunlight free and flowers in goodly store? But he only turned away from me and burst into a roar. Cried he, My legs are thin and few, where once I had a swarm. Soft fuzzy fur, a joy to view, once kept my body warm. Before these flapping winged things grew, to hamper and deform. At that outrageous bug I shot the fury of mine eye. Said I in scorn all burning hot, in rage and anger high. You ignominious idiot, those wings are made to fly. I do not want to fly, said he. I only want to squirm. And he drooped his wings dejectedly, but still his voice was firm. I do not want to be a fly. I want to be a worm. O oh, yesterday of unknown lack, today of unknown bliss, I left my fool in red and black, the last I saw was this, the creature madly climbing back into his chrysalis. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ad Infinitum by William Carlos Williams. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Still, I bring flowers, although you fling them at my feet, until none stays that is not struck across with wounds, flowers and flowers, that you may break them utterly, as you have always done. Sure, happily, I still bring flowers, flowers, knowing how all are crumpled in your praise and may not live to speak a lesser thing. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Carmen de Bohem by Hart Crane. Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Carmen de Bohem. Sinuously winding through the room on smoky tongues of sweetened cigarettes. Plaintive yet proud, the cello tones resume, the andante of smooth hopes and lost regrets. Bright peacocks drink from flame pots by the wall, just as absinthe sipping women shiver through, with shimmering blue from the bowl in Circe's hall, their brown eyes blacken and the blue drop hue. The andante quivers with crescendo's start, and dies on fire's birth in each man's heart. The tapestry betrays a finger through the slit soft pulling, and music follows cue. There is a sweep, a shattering, a choir, disquieting of barbarous fantasy. The pulse is in the ears, the heart is higher, and stretches up through mortal eyes to see. Carmen, akimbo arms and smoldering eyes. Carmen, bestirring hope and lipping eyes. Carmen whirls and music swirls and dips. Carmen comes awed from wine-hot lips. Finale leaves in silence to replume. Bent wings and Carmen with her flaunts through the gloom. Of whispering tapestry, brown with old fringe. The winers leave too, and the small lamps twinge. Morning, and through the foggy city gate, a gypsy wagon wiggles, striving straight. 
and some dream still of Carmen's mystic face, yellow, pallid, like ancient lace. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Christine by Richard Middleton, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Christine. How cold she is, and yet that shade of her who fills my dreams with sensuous images has veins of warmer, quicker blood than these who yield me their affections. Might I stir the secret pool that is her heart, and blur with ringed ripples the tranquillities which are a deathly glass to one who sees his own swart soul where truth and wonder were would love unfold his wings and fan my face with odorous winds of dreams made animate and wondered things become the things that are or should i turn and seek another place while from the broken halls and desolate she wandered forth to greet the morning star. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Christmas Carol for 1862 by George MacDonald. This is a LibriVox recording. A Christmas Carol for 1862. The year of the trouble in Lancashire. The skies are pale, the trees are stiff, the earth is dull and old, the frost is glittering as if the very sun were cold, and hunger fell is joined with frost, to make men thin and wane. Come, babe, from heaven, or we are lost, be born a child of man. The children cry, the women shake, the strong men stare about, they sleep when they should be awake, they wake ere night is out. For they have lost their heritage, no sweat is on their brow. Come, babe, and bring them work and wage. Be born, and save us now. Across the sea, beyond our sight, roars on the fierce debate. The men go down in bloody fight, the women weep and hate. And in the right, be which that may, surely the strife is long. Come, son of man, thy righteous way, and right will have no wrong. Good men speak lies against thine own, tongue quick and hearing slow. They will not let thee walk alone, and think to serve thee so. If they the children's freedom saw, in thee the children's king, they would still be with holy awe, or only speak to sing. Some neither lie, nor starve, nor fight, nor yet the poor deny. But in their hearts all is not right, they often sit and sigh. We need thee every day and hour, in sunshine and in snow. Child King, we pray with all our power, be born, save us so. We are but men and women, Lord, thou art a gracious child. O oh, fill our hearts and heap our board, pray thee thy winter's wild. The sky is sad, the trees are bare, hunger and hate about. Come, child, and ill deeds and ill fare will soon be driven out. End of poem. The following is available in the public domain. Come Not When I Am Dead by Alfred Lord Tennyson Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King Come not when I am dead To drop thy foolish tears upon my grave To trample round my fallen head And vex the unhappy dust Thou wouldst not save There let the wind sweep and the plover cry, but thou, go by. Child, if it were thine error or thy crime, I care no longer, being all unblessed. Wed whom thou wilt, but I am sick of time, and I desire to rest. Pass on, weak heart, and leave me where I lie. Go by. Go by. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Flooded Hut of the Mississippi 
by Samuel Lover Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T On the wide rolling river at eve set the sun And the long toiling day of the woodman was done And he flung down the axe that had felled the huge tree And his own little daughter he placed on his knee she looked up with smiles at the dovecot or head where circling round flew the pigeons she fed and more fondly the sire clasped his child to his breast as he kissed her and called her the bird of his nest the wild rolling river rose high in the night the wild rolling river at morn showed its might for it leaped o'er its bounds and invaded the wood where the humble abode of the woodcutter stood all was danger around and no aid was in view and higher and higher the wild waters grew and the child looking up at the dovecot in air cried father o oh father i wish we were there my child said the father that dovecot of thine should enliven our faith in the mercy divine twas a dove that brought noah the sweet branch of peace to show him the anger of heaven did cease then kneel my loved child by thy fond father's side and pray that our hut may in safety abide and then from all fear may our bosoms be proof while the dove of the deluge is over our roof. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Grass by Carl Sandburg. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. Pile the bodies high at Austerlitz and Waterloo. Shovel them under and let me work. I am the grass. I cover all. And pile them high at Gettysburg, and pile them high at Ypres and Verdun. Shovel them under and let me work. Two years, ten years, and passengers ask the conductor, what place is this? Where are we now? I am the grass. Let me work. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Arden by George Meredith, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. When comes the lighted day for men to read life's meaning, with the work before their hands, till this good gift of breath from debt is freed, earth will not hear her children's wailful bands deplore the chieftain fallen in sob and dirge, nor they look where is darkness but on high. The sun that dropped down our horizon's verge illumes his labours through the travelled sky, now seen in some most glorious, and tis known by what our warrior wrought we hold him fast. A splendid image built of man has flown, his deeds inspired of God outstep a past, Ours the great privilege to have had one among us who celestial tasks has done. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I Remember, I Remember by Thomas Hood Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk I Remember I remember the house where I was born, the little window where the sun came peeping in at morn. He never came a wink too soon, nor brought too long a day. But now I often wish the night had borne my breath away. I remember, I remember, the roses red and white, the violets and the lily cups, those flowers made of light, the lilacs 
where the robin built and where my brother set the laburnum on his birthday the tree is living yet i remember i remember where i was used to swing and thought the air must rush as fresh to swallows on the wing my spirit flew in feathers then that is so heavy now and summer pools could hardly cool the fever on my brow i remember i remember the fir trees dark and high i used to think their slender tops were close against the sky it was a childish ignorance but now tis little joy to know i'm farther off from heaven than when i was a boy end of poem this recording is in the public domain the japanese anemone by louise imogen guinea read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter all summer the breath of the roses around exhales with a delicate passionate sound and when from a trellis in holiday places they croon and cajole with their slumberous faces a lad in the lane must slacken his paces fragrance of these is a voice from a bower but low by the wall is my odorless flower so pure so controlled not a fume is above her that poet or bee should delay there and hover for she is a silence and therefore i love her and never a mortal by morn or midnight is called to her hid little house of delight as she keeps from the wind on his pillages olden upon a true stalk in rough weather upholden her winter white gourd with the hollow moon golden while ardors of roses contend and increase methinks she has found how noble is peace like a spirit besought from the world to dissever not absent to men though resumed by the giver and dead long ago being lovely for ever End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Kraken by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Read for LibriVox.org by Ryan Finch. Below the thunders of the upper deep, far, far beneath in the abysmal sea, his ancient, dreamless, uninvaded sleep the kraken sleepeth faintest sunlight flee about his shadowy sides above him swell huge sponges of millennial growth and height and far away into the sickly light from many a wondrous and secret cell unnumbered and enormous polypi winnow with giant arms the lumbering green there hath he lain for ages and will lie battening upon huge sea worms in his sleep until the latter fire shall heat the deep then once by man and angels to be seen in roaring he shall rise and on the surface die End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ode 11 from Amir Khosrau e Dalavi, translated by A. O. Qureshi. This is a LibriVox recording by Hatton43, blog de la quinzaine.wordpress.com. The rose has blossomed in the garden. Where is that blooming bud? It is time for the enjoyment of friends. Where is that tulip of the garden? Every time that she laughed, a thousand like me became her slaves, and a hundred dead ones were revived by that lip. 
where, oh where, is the soother of my pains? They tell me to quit love and devise means of comfort. Where is a helpless man who can command contrivances? And where is the mad one who is possessed of comforts? Kizza moistened his lips and drank the water of life with joy through his luck and good fortune, whereas Alexander ran in the search to find out where the fountain of life was. Shouldst thou give up thy life, thou wouldst obtain security, so said she to me every time. Here with my life I yield obedience to the command, but where is that disobedient friend? I said, so long as I have that bright soul, it is you yourself in this frame of mind. You said, Indeed, it is I. But if this is you, where is the soul itself? You said to me, Practice patience, assume unbounded humility, and make me thy own by this means. Here I have practiced this, but where is that? If in our lane thou shouldst not pass openly, even once a month, where is a secret inquiry occasionally with the point of thy eyelashes? Ere uh, this, I was always thy companion. Is not Kusrau after all the same? Where are those promises and those pledges? End of recording. This recording is in the public domain. O22 from Amir Kusrawi Dilavi, translated by A. O. Qureshi. This is a LibriVox recording by Hatton43, blog de la quinzaine.wordpress.com. O Lord, what prosperity is this, what felicity has come to us, that the charming mistress has passed through the street of the forgotten ones. Tonight my beloved came forth laughing, stay, O oh stay, for a moment at least, I may behold the Pleiades and the Orion. God be praised that my wakeful nights have not been fruitless, I have seen that very cypress-like beauty sleeping in my embrace. O drummer, distract thee not this night with anxieties for drum-beating, since keepers of many a vigil are reposing in the embrace of their friends tonight. O smiling rose-petal, say truly, where have you been last night, since you have made this day a night for the rose-scented ones? You with me, God be glorified. How can this proceed from thee? I with thee, heaven forbid. How can I have that boldness? O Kusrau, why do you talk so much of union that is not? It's an idle fancy, for thou hast given mania admittance unto thyself. End of recording. Ode 5 from Amir Kusrau e Dilavi, translated by A. O. Qureshi. This is a LibriVox recording by Hatton 43. Once more, the heart of me mad in love, has been lost in her street. Why on earth did I observe that drunken form? O oh breeze, at times when you happen to pass by these spots, put that stranger in mind of her old friends. Every night her thought enters my heart from every quarter. What side of this ruined abode am I to keep guard over? Life has passed away, and the narrative of our love has not ended. The night has worn away, and I therefore cut short my romance. Tell the flames to envelop the soul, and the fire to burn away the heart. The candle is not of those who pity the moth. Our very soul is ruined at her sight, whereas her coquetry is beyond all limits. We are intoxicated by the least smell, and lo, the cupbearer hands us too full a goblet. O oh heart, after all you did once frequent this lane of ours, have you so entirely forgotten this abode? I do not stand in need of thy asking me to abandon all reputation and good name, for no one teaches a lesson in notoriety to mad men. Kusrau is comfortable with the burnings of his heart, and he is unacquainted with the pleasures of this world. How can the fire-eating bird relish a grain of corn? End of recording. This recording is in the public domain. Legend by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, 1749-1832 to 1832. Read for LibriVox.org Legend 
there lived in the desert a holy man to whom a goat-footed fawn one day paid a visit and thus began to his surprise i entreat thee to pray that grace to me and my friends may be given that we may be able to mount to heaven for great is our thirst for heavenly bliss the holy man made answer to this much danger is lurking in thy petition nor will it be easy to gain admission thou dost not come with an angel's salute for i see thou wearest a cloven foot the wild man paused and then answered he what doth my goat's foot matter to thee full many i have known into heaven to pass straight and with ease with the head of an ass End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mad Maudlin to find out Tom of Bedlam by Anonymous. Read for LibriVox.org by Ryan Finch. To find my Tom of Bedlam, ten thousand years I'll travel. Mad Maudlin goes with dirty toes to save her shoes from gravel yet will i sing bonny boys bonny mad boys bedlam boys are bonny they still go bare and live by the air and want no drink nor money i now repent that ever poor tom was so disdained my wits are lost since him i crossed which makes me go thus chained yet will i sing bonny boys bonny mad boys bedlam boys are bonny they still go bare and live by the air and want no drink nor money my staff hath murdered giants my bag a long knife carries to cut mince pies from children's thighs with which I feast the fairies. Yet will I sing, Bonny boys, Bonny mad boys, Bedlam boys are bonny, They still go bare, And live by the air, And want no drink nor money. My horn is made of thunder, I stole it out of heaven, The rainbow there, Is this I wear, For which I thence was driven. Yet will I sing, Bonny boys, Bonny mad boys, Bedlam boys are bonny, They still go bare, And live by the air, And want no drink nor money. I went to Pluto's kitchen, To beg some food one morning, And there I got, Souls piping hot, With which the spits were turning. Yet will I sing, Bonny boys, bonny mad boys, Bedlam boys are bonny, They still go bare, and live by the air, And want no drink nor money. Then took I up a cauldron, Where boiled ten thousand harlots, T'was full of flame, yet I drank the same, To the health of all such varlets. Yet will I sing, Bonny boys, bonny mad boys, Bedlam boys are bonny, They still go bare, and live by the air, And want no drink nor money. A spirit as hot as lightning, Did in that journey guide me, The sun did shake, and the pale moon quake, As soon as e'er they spied me. Yet will I sing, Bonny boys, bonny mad boys, Bedlam boys are bonny, They still go bare, and live by the air, And want no drink nor money. And now that I have gotten a lease, Than doomsday longer, To live on earth, with some in mirth, Ten whales shall feed my hunger. Yet will I sing, bonny boys, bonny mad boys, Bedlam boys are bonny, They still go bare, And live by the air, And want no drink nor money. No gypsy, slut, or doxy, 
shall win my mad tongue from me. Will weep all night, and with stars fight, the fray will well become me. Yet will I sing, Barney boys, Barney mad boys, Bedlam boys are bonny, they still go bare and live by the air, and want no drink nor money. And when that I have beaten the man if moon to powder, his dog I'll take and him I'll make as could no demon louder. Yet will I sing, Bonnie boys, Bonnie mad boys, Bedlam boys are bonnie, they still go bare and live by the air and want no drink nor money. A health to Tom of Bedlam, go fill the seas in barrels, I'll drink it all, while brewed with gall, and maudling drunk, I'll quarrel. Yet will I sing, bonny boys, bonny mad boys, bedlam boys are bonny, they still go bare, and live by the air, and want no drink, nor money. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Major General from Pirates of Penzance by William S. Gilbert. Read for LibriVox.org by Scotty Smith. I am the very pattern of a modern major general. I've information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the kings of England, and I quote the fights historical from Marathon to Waterloo in order categorical. I'm very well acquainted, too, with matters mathematical. I understand equations, both the simple and quadratical. About binomial theorem, I'm teeming with a lot of news. With interesting facts about the square of the hypotenuse. I'm very good at integral and differential calculus. I know the scientific names of beings and amalculus. In short, in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, I'm the very model of a modern major general. I know our mythic history, King Arthur's answer caradox. I answer hard acrostics. I have a pretty taste for paradox. I quote another jags all the crimes of Heliogabalus. In conics, I can floor peculiarities parabolus. I tell undoubted Raphael's from Gerald Dow's and Zophanes. I know the croaking chorus from the frogs of Aristophanes. Then I can hum a fugue of which I've heard the music's dinner for, and whistle all the airs from that confounded nonsense pinafore. Then I can write a washing bill in Babylonic cuneiform and tell you every detail of Caractacus's uniform. In short, in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very model of a modern major general. In fact, when I know what is meant by Mamelon and Revelin, when I can tell outside a Casipo rifle from a javelin, when such affairs as sorties and surprises I'm more wary at, and when I know precisely what is meant by commissariat, when I have learnt what progress has been made in modern gunnery, when I know more of tactics than a novice in a nunnery, in short, when I've a smattering of elementary strategy, you'll say a better major general has never strategy. For my military knowledge, though I'm plucky and adventury, has only been brought down to the beginning of the century. But still, in learning vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very model of a modern major general. End of poem. This recording's in the public domain. Mentana, Third Anniversary by Algernon Charles Swinburne Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Mentana, Third Anniversary 1. Such prayers last year were put up for thy sake. What shall this year do that hath lived to see the piteous and unpitied end of thee. What moan, what cry, what clamour shall it make, seeing as a reed breaks, all thine empire break, and all thy great strength as a rotten tree, whose branches made broad night from sea to sea, and the world shuddered when a leaf would shake. From the unknown deep wherein those prayers were heard, from the dark height of time, there sounds a word, crying, Comfort. Though death ride on this red hour, Hope waits with eyes that make the morning dim, Till liberty, reclothed with love and power, Shall pass and know not if she tread on him. 2. The hour for which man hungered and had thirst, And dying were loath to die before it came, 
is it indeed upon thee and the lame late foot of vengeance on thy trace accursed for years in sepulchred and crimes in hearsed for days marked red or black with blood or shame hath it outrun thee to tread out thy name this scourge this hour is this indeed the worst o clothed and crowned with curses canst thou tell have thy dead whispered to thee what they see whose eyes are open in the dark on thee ere spotted soul and body take farewell or what of life beyond the worms may be satiate the immitigable hours in hell 1870 end of poem this recording is in the public domain mood by maxwell boldenheim read for LibriVox.org by matt perard standing before your heart one evening i bent and saw a little gate its posts and bars were like still smoke tinged with a drolly murmuring red i had passed near it many times on my way to the drowsy carnivals in your heart but not until one evening did i see it there are no walls or keepers before her heart so why this little gate i asked then a joy maiden ran to the gate and perched upon it lightly fingering her tenuous outblown mandolin of hair this gate is over an unseen road she said and one grief pilgrim comes here every evening he feels the closed gate and sinks tired at its feet while i play upon my hair and make him sleep end of poem this recording is in the public domain my boy jack by rudyard kipling read for LibriVox.org by winston tharp have you news of my boy jack not this tide when do you think that he'll come back not with this wind blowing and this tide has anyone else said word of him not this tide for what is sunk will hardly swim not with this wind blowing and this tide oh dear what comfort can i find none this tide nor any tide except he did not shame his kind not even with that wind blowing and that tide then hold your head up all the more this tide and every tide because he was the son you bore and gave to that wind blowing and that tide end of poem this recording is in the public domain no coward soul is mine by emily bronte read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist no coward soul is mine no trembler in the world's storm-troubled sphere I see heaven's glories shine, and faith shines equal, arming me from fear. O oh God within my breast, almighty, ever-present deity, life that in me has rest as I, undying life, have power in thee. Vain are the thousand creeds that move men's hearts, unutterably vain. Worthless as withered weeds, or idlest froth amid the boundless main, to waken doubt in one holding so fast by thine infinity, so surely anchored on the steadfast rock of immortality with wide embracing love thy spirit animates eternal years pervades and broods above changes sustains dissolves creates and rears though earth and man were gone 
and suns and universes ceased to be and thou were left alone every existence would exist in thee there is not room for death nor atom that his might could render void thou thou art being and breath and what thou art may never be destroyed end of poem this recording is in the public domain ode in may by william watson read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter let me go forth and share the overflowing sun with one wise friend or one better than wise being fair where the peewit wheels and dips on heights of bracken and ling and earth unto her leaflet tips tingles with the spring what is so sweet and dear as a prosperous morn in may the confident prime of the day and the dauntless youth of the year when nothing that asks for bliss asking a right is denied and half of the world a bridegroom is and half of the world a bride the song of mingling flows grave ceremonial pure as one from lips that endure the cosmic descant rose when the temporal lord of life going his golden way had taken a wondrous maid to wife that long had set him nay for of old the son our sire came wooing the mother of men earth that was virginal then vestal fire to his fire silent her bosom and coy but the strong god sued and pressed and born of their starry nuptial joy are all that drink of her breast and the triumph of him that begot and the travail of her that bore behold they are evermore as warp and weft in our lot we are children of splendor and flame of shuddering also and tears Magnificent out of the dust we came, And abject from the spheres. O bright irresistible Lord, We are fruit of earth's womb, each one, And fruit of thy loins, O sun, Whence first was the seed outpoured. To thee as our father we bow, Forbidden thy father to see, Who is older and greater than thou, as thou art greater and older than we. Thou art but as a word of his speech, thou art but as a wave of his hand, thou art brief as the glitter of sand twixt tide and tide on his beach. Thou art less than a spark of his fire, or a moment's mood of his soul. Thou art lost in the notes on the lips of his choir that chant the chant of the whole. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Rebel by Anonymous. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Rebel. A new song or ballad showing the naughty conceits of traitors that all loyal and true hearted men may know and eschew the same. They count the peace to be cause of idleness, and that it marketh men hodipakers and cowardice. Bishop Christopherson, Exhortation Against Rebellion, 1554 Tell me no more of peace, this cowardice disguised, the child of fear and heartless ease, a thing to be despised. Let daffodils entwine the seely shepherd's brow, a nobler wreath I'll win for mine, the laurel's manly bow. May garlands fitter show on swains who dream of love, and all their cherisons bestow upon the whining dove. I'll have no doves, not I. Their softness is disgrace. I love the eagle's lightning eye that stares in Phoebus' face. I mark that noble thing, bound on his upward flight, 
scatter the clouds with mighty wing and breast the tide of light and scorned the things that creep prone visaged on the earth to eat its fruits to play to sleep the purpose of their birth such softlings take delight in cynthia's sickly beam give me a heaven of coal black night slashed with the watchfire gleam they dote upon the lute the cittern and the lyre such sounds mine ear do little suit they match not my desire the trumpet blast let it come in shrieks on the fitful gale the charger's hoof beat time to the drum and the clank of the rider's mail not for the heaps untold that swell the miser's hoard i claim the birthright of the bold the dowry of the sword nor yet the gilded gem that coronets the slave i clutch the spectre diadem that marshals on the brave for that be sin and woe all priests and women tell be fire and sword i pass not though this earth be made a hell above the rest to shine is all in all to me it is unto a soul like mine to be or not to be end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Returning, we hear the larks by Isaac Rosenberg. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. Somber the night is, and though we have our lives, we know what sinister threat lurks there. Dragging these anguished limbs, we only know this poisoned, blasted track opens on our camp on a little safe sleep. But hark! Joy! Joy! Strange joy! Lo! Heights of night ringing with unseen larks, music showering on our upturned, listening faces. Death could drop from the dark as easily as song, but song only drops like a blind man's dreams on the sand by dangerous tides, like a girl's dark hair, for she dreams no ruin lies there, or her kisses where a serpent hides. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Satirical Elegy by Jonathan Swift Read for LibriVox.org by Recording Person A Satirical Elegy On the Death of a Late Famous General His Grace, Impossible, What, Dead? Of old age too, and in his bed? And could that mighty warrior fall, And so inglorious after all? Well, since he's gone, no matter how, The last loud trump must wake him now, And trust me, as the noise grows stronger, He'd wish to sleep a little longer. And could he be indeed so old as by the newspapers we're told? Three score, I think, is pretty high. Twas time and conscience he should die. This world he cumbered long enough. He burns his candle to the snuff. And that's the reason some folks think he left behind so great a stink. Behold, his funeral appears. Nor widow's sighs, nor orphan's tears. Want at such times each heart to pierce, attend the progress of his hearse. But what of that, his friends must say? He had those honours in his day. True to his prophet and his pride, he made them weep before he died. Come hither, all ye empty things, ye bubbles raised by breath of kings, who float upon the tide of state. Come hither, and behold your fate. Let pride be taught by this rebuke. How very mean are things a duke. From all his ill-gotten honours flung, turn to that dirt from which he sprung. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Self Deceit by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, 1749 to 1832. Read for LibriVox.org. Self Deceit. My neighbor's curtain, well I see, is moving to and fro. No doubt she's listening eagerly if I'm at home or no. And if the jealous grudge I bore and openly confessed, 
is nourished by me as before within my inmost breast alas no fancies such as these e'er crossed the dear child's thoughts i see tis but the evening breeze that with the curtain sports end of poem this recording is in the public domain She dwelt among the untrodden ways by William Wordsworth, read for LibriVox.org by Ian King. She dwelt among the untrodden ways, beside the springs of dove, a maid whom there were none to praise and very few to love, a violet by a mossy stone half hidden from the eye, fair as a star when only one is shining in the sky. She lived unknown, and few could know when Lucy ceased to be. But she is in her grave, and oh, the difference to me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Sheik by Dorothy Parker from Life Magazine, January 1922. Read for LibriVox.org by Matt Perard. The desert chieftain, here behold, the Dempsey of the Nile. He knocks the lady readers cold and cramps their husband's style. The heroine reels back for more. They play like happy kids. He tells his love, then knocks her for a row of pyramids. She revels in his gallant deeds her passions higher mount each time he languidly proceeds to drop her for the count they marry in the end they do in all such compositions and now no doubt he'll knock her through another twelve editions so if you'd knock the ladies dead just use your right and go ahead end of poem this recording is in the public domain Snowbirds by Louis Honoré Frichette, translated from the Canadian French by C. G. B. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Snowbirds, when the rude equinox with his cold train from our horizons drives accustomed cheer, behold, a thousand winged sprites appear and flutter briskly round the frosty plain. No seeds are anywhere save sleety rain no leafage thick against the outlook drear rough winds to wildly whip them far and near god's heart alone to feel their every pain dear little travellers through this icy realm fear not the tempest shall you overwhelm the glad spring buds within your happy song go whirl about the avalanche and be o oh, birds of snow unharmed and so teach me whom god does guard is stronger than the strong end of poem this recording is in the public domain song by thomas carew read for LibriVox.org by eva davis song ask me no more where jove bestows when june is past the fading rose for in your beauty's orient deep these flowers as in their causes sleep ask me no more whither do stray the golden atoms of the day for in pure love heaven did prepare these powders to enrich your hair ask me no more whither doth haste the nightingale when may is past for in your sweet dividing throat she winters and keeps warm her note Ask me no more where these stars light that downwards fall in dead of night, for in your eyes they sit and there fixed become as in their sphere. Ask me no more if east or west the phoenix builds her spicy nest, for unto you at last she flies and in your fragrant bosom dies. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
The Spirit of Sound by Nur Gardner. Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Benson. For those who were touched by the events at the Manchester Arena on May the 22nd, 2017. Oh, the Spirit of Sound! It is in the green trees, and it floats all around to the breath of the breeze. List the hush of its tones. Tis the voice of the leaves that in musical moans for the passing hour grieves. Oh, the spirit of sound! It is in the bright rill as it flows o'er the ground or foams white from the hill. Oh, how sweetly it rings as it murmurs along as if wild unseen things were in mourning and song. Oh, the spirit of sound! It laughs out on the shore to the wild waters bound as they revel and roar, and the dark winged storm rides in might with the cloud, then spreads his wild form o'er the waves like a shroud. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Strange fits of passion have I known by William Wordsworth. Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King. Strange fits of passion have I known, and I will dare to tell, but in the lover's ear alone, what once to me befell. When she I loved looked every day, fresh as a rose in June, I to her cottage bent my way beneath an evening moon. Upon the moon I fixed my eye all over the wide lea. With quickening pace my horse drew nigh Those paths so dear to me. And now we reached the orchard plot, And, as we climbed the hill, The sinking moon to Lucy's cot Came near and nearer still. In one of those sweet dreams I slept, Kind nature's gentlest boon, And all the while my eyes I kept On the descending moon, my horse moved on, hoof after hoof he raised, and never stopped, when down behind the cottage roof, at once the bright moon dropped. What fond and wayward thoughts will slide into a lover's head? O oh, mercy, to myself I cried, if Lucy should be dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Tom O Bedlam Song by Anonymous Read for LibriVox.org by Ryan Finch From the hag and hungry goblin That into rags would rend ye All the spirits that stand by the naked man In the book of moons defend ye That of your five sound senses You never be forsaken Nor never travel from Yourselves with Tom, abroad to beg your bacon. Nor never sing, any food and feeding, Money, drink or clothing, come dame or maid, Be not afraid, poor Tom will injure nothing. Of thirty bare years have I, twice twenty been enraged, And of forty been, three times fifteen, Endurance soundly caged. In the lovely lofts of Bedlam, In stubble, soft and dainty, Brave bracelets strung, Sweet whips ding-dung, And a wholesome hunger plenty. Yet did I sing, Any food and feeding, Money, drink or clothing, Come dame or maid, Be not afraid, Poor Tom will injure nothing. With a fort I took for maudlin, and a cruise of cockle pottage, and a thing thus tall, sky bless you all, I fell into this dotage. I slept not since the conquest, till then I never waked, till the roguish boy of love where I lay, me found and stripped me naked. Yet do I sing, any food and feeding, money, drink or clothing, Come dame or maid, be not afraid, poor Tom will injure nothing. 
when short I have shorn my sow's face, and swigged my horned barrel, in an oaken inn do I pawn my skin, as a suit of gilt apparel, the morn's my constant mistress, and the lonely owl my marrow, the flaming drake and the night crow make me music to my sorrow. Yet do I sing, any food and feeding, money, drink or clothing, come dame or maid, be not afraid, poor Tom will injure nothing. The palsy plague these pounces, when I prig your pigs or pollen, your culvers take, or mateless make, your chanticleer and sullen. When I want provant, with Humphrey I sup, and when benighted, to repose in pause with waking souls, I never am affrighted. Yet do I sing, any food and feeding, money, drink or clothing, come dame or maid, be not afraid, Poor Tom will injure nothing. I know more than Apollo, For, oft, when he lies sleeping, I behold the stars at mortal wars, And the rounded welkin weeping. The moon embraces her shepherd, And the queen of love her warrior, While the first doth horn the stars of the morn, and the next the heavenly farrier. And yet do I sing, any food and feeding, money, drink or clothing, come dame or maid, be not afraid, poor Tom will injure nothing. With a host of furious fancies, whereof I am commander, with a burning spear and a horse of air, to the wilderness I wander, With a night of ghosts and shadows, I summoned am to tourney, Ten leagues beyond the wide world's end, Methinks it is no journey. Yet do I sing, Any food and feeding, Money, drink or clothing, Come dame or maid, Be not afraid, Poor Tom will injure nothing. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Trade Wind Song by Thomas Fleming Day. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Oh, I am the wind that the seamen love. I am steady and strong and true. They follow my track by the clouds above or the fathomless tropic blue. For close by the shores of the sunny Azores their ships I await to convoy. When into their sails my constant breath pours, they hail me with turbulent joy. Oh, I bring them a rest from the tiresome toil of trimming the sail to the blast, for I love to keep gear all snug in the coil, and the sheets and the braces all fast. From the deck to the truck I pour all my force, in spanker and jib I am strong, for I make every course to pull like a horse, and worry the great ship along as i fly o'er the blue i sing to the crew who answer me back with a hail i whistle a note as i slip by the throat of the buoyant and bellying sail i laugh when the wave leaps over the head and the jibs through the spray bow shine for an acre of foam is broken and spread when she shoulders and tosses the brine. Through daylight and dark I follow the bark, I keep like a hound on her trail. I'm strongest at noon, yet under the moon 
I stiffen the bunt of her sail. The wide ocean through, for days I pursue, Till slowly my forces all wane. Then in whispers of calm I bid them adieu, And vanish in thunder and rain. Oh, I am the wind that the seamen love, I am steady and strong and true. They follow my track by the clouds above, O'er the fathomless tropic blue. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Twelve Months by George Ellis. Read for LibriVox.org by recording person. The Twelve Months. Snowy, flowy, blowy. Showery, flowery, bowery. Hoppy, croppy, droppy. Breezy, sneezy, freezy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On the Wedding of the Aeronaut by Ambrose Bias. Read for LibriVox.org by recording person. On the Wedding of the Aeronaut. Aeronaut, you're fairly caught, despite your bubble's leaven. Out of the skies, a lady's eyes have brought you down to heaven. No more, no more, you'll freely soar above the grass and gravel. Henceforth you'll walk, and she will chalk the line that you're to travel. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The White Rose of June by Carolina Oliphant, Lady Nairn Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Now the bright sun and the soft simmer showers Deck all the woods and the gardens with flowers But bonny and sweet though the hail o' them be There is ain a boon now that is dearest to me And oh, that's the white rose the white rose of June, and may he that should wear it come back again soon. It's not on my breast, nor yet in my hair, that the emblem dear I venture to wear. But it blooms in my heart, and its white leaves I weet, when Elaine in the gloaming I wander to greet, or the white rose, the white rose, the white rose of June, and may he that should wear it come back again soon. Mere fragrant and rich the red rose may be, but there is nae spell to bind it to me. But dear to my heart and to fond memory, though scathed and though blighted the white rose may be. Oh, the white rose, the white rose, the white rose of June. Oh, may he that should wear it come back again soon. And oh, may the true hearts thy perils who share, Remembered with tears, and remembered in prayer, Whom misfortune's rude blast has sent for away, Fair breezes bring back soon to cottage and hay. Then, oh, sing with the white rose, the white rose of June, And may he that should wear it wear Scotland's old croon. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Why I Am a Liberal by Robert Browning Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Why? Because all I haply can and do, All that I am now, all I hope to be, Whence comes it save from fortune setting free Body and soul the purpose to pursue? god traced for both if fetters not a few of prejudice convention fall from me these shall i bid men each in his degree also god guided bear and gaily too but little do or can the best of us that little is achieved through liberty who then dares hold emancipated thus 
his fellow shall continue bound not i who live love labour freely nor discuss a brother's right to freedom that is why end of poem this recording is in the public domain the yacht by thomas fleming day read for librivox dot org by bruce Kachuk. how like a queen she walks the summer sea her canvas crowning well the comely mould light loved until it lifts a spire of gold outlined and inset by a tracery of rig and spar hers is a witchery of loveliness that seems to draw and hold the wind to do its bidding fold on fold the seas charge in then stricken by the free quick lancing of her stem recoil to break against the breeze then rushing back they foam along the rail and swirl into the wake and rave astern in many a wrinkled dome for thus she doth her windward way betake like one who lives to conquer and to roam end of poem this recording is in the public domain